You're listening to the Bathtub Refinishing Podcast. Powered by Bathtub Guys Refinishing. We discuss the refinishing industry, interview owners and operators, and give tips to business owners and entrepreneurs. Now, here's your host, Daniel Montalvo. Hello, everybody. Turn that shit down real quick. So, this is the Bathtub Refinishing Podcast. Let me see. You can't hear me? No? Or can you hear me? Okay. Maybe it's the headphone. Let's make sure it's plugged in before we keep going. There you go. You hear me good? Okay. All right. So this is the Bath to Be Finishing podcast, everybody. Uh, we did part one with uh, Danny and Michelle from Alliance and, and from Ace Renovation. Uh, they are still here, but we also added some people. So we have Ruben um, so from Surface Pro Refinishing. He's here. Uh, his son, Evan. Uh, and then my brother, Alex, uh, also from Bathtub Guys. So, yeah, man. We got a, fu- a full show here. Um, it's going to be interesting. Good? Headphone? Okay. You're good? All right. So, um, yeah, man. Uh, Danny had some questions. I, I guess we should just go right into it for you because you're the youngest one here. Um, so if you want to go ahead and just you know, reiterate for the people, like, what, what, are, what are you curious about in their situation so, over there? So I'm curious, man. Um, I want to hear from the Young Bucks perspective. Like, you're young, you're working for your pops, he's had his business for a while. What is your vision, right, to, to get the, the company to the next level? What is your vision for the company, right? How do you want to move forward? What does the future look like? And only reason why I ask that is because you're the youngest one here, and I want to see it from your bird's eye. How? Of course. My vision is basically get me and my pops just to the next level as far as booming in Atlanta. All of Georgia, really all of the South, to be honest. That's the plan. I mean, uh, I talk to him all the time about different ways we can, uh, you know, just, you know, strategize and get ourselves to be, the, you know, the different refinishing guys out of everybody, you know. And I've been trying to tell him, you know, like, just try new stuff out and, you know, see where it gets us. Right on. So how many guys, is it just you two for now or? Much, yeah, just us two. Right on, right on. Going at it every day. All right. So what is it you do? Do you do, you I do, do? The refinishing cabinets, bathtubs, countertops? Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Right on, bro. Right on. So, one of the things I'm curious about, what? Because I know you have other kids, right? What drove you to want to do this? Honestly, at first, at first, it was just I got tired of nine to five. That's what really just made me like I'm gonna work with my dad. Mm-hmm. You know, see where it gets me, but then I actually started to, you know, like refinishing, respraying bathtubs, cabinets. You know, I seen the craft with it, and I was just like, you know, this is actually what I want to do, and I seen the money that it makes too. So you know, I just I stuck with them, and we're here now. I know we talked about that a little bit, like when we did the first one with, with you two, and I told you, like, I know for sure, like you know, people your age who have already kind of started off on the wrong foot, right? They got oh, yeah. into debt. They don't fucking know what they're doing. You know, they're working part time, trying to freaking just catch up with payments for student loans and shit like that. So, like, you, you know, for a lot of people listening, like, these routes, even though sometimes they might feel riskier, you know, you could lose 10K and be cool, man. But you can't get out of these student loan debts, bro. Yeah. The, the accumulating interest, all that shit. And I always tell people, bro, if you're not going to be a doctor or a lawyer, bro, <laughs> Why? To get a liberal arts degree, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> but you know, bro, these are respectable. Like, th- this is a respectable trade. Like, you know, there's people who might be like, "Yo, you know, what are you doing? You just paint fucking bathtubs." Compare bank accounts, bro, Not for and, and see where y'all are each gonna be at in ten years. You know, so I would uh, tell any young buck that's watching this podcast, um, shoot, if you have a dad that has any trade, even with refinishing, and stay down with it, man. Yeah, yep. makes money, man. You don't you don't know where it could take you. And you're the next generation, bro. Yeah, definitely, you know, you can take it to yep. the next level. So. Yeah, bring it into the 21st century. Does anybody have any more questions for 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 him specifically? Is there anything you guys want to like know particularly? I'm just interested at, at 21. If you start to develop the skills on how to how to scale this early, 
you know, how much potential you have coming your way. Because, you know, obviously at 21 years old, you're already refinishing cabinets, counters, bathtubs, probably an expert in the field. Within the next year to two years, if you can gauge that focus into building the business, you know, your, your potential is practically unlimited. You know, me and Danny both started young, a little bit older than you started. So if we can get to where we were, you know, where we are at now and you start today, there's the, the sky's the limit. And then this this platform right here is like there's what fucking 60 years of knowledge up in here right now that we're all sharing. And you're part of it at 21. Yeah, that's what my dad tells me. He was like, man, I had to go through the mud. He's like, I'm paving the way for you. Saying, exactly, hundred so percent, bro. I appreciate them a lot. Just even bringing me around you guys, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I put my head up to, get to the next level. Yeah, bro. Both of them. How long have you been in business? Well, I'll let him talk. Hello, hello. Um, been in business since 2008. Okay. But just as a tech myself, I did it all myself. 2017. Started Surface Pro refinishing and um, still in apartments. Me and Danny were talking in California. Apartments industry here in Atlanta or over there is way different. Way more cutthroat, fickle business. Nobody pays. It sucks. Mm -hmm. And for everybody listening, that's the truth. That's just what it is. And so I got out of it. It strictly went residential. Guy was pushing me, like I told Jonathan last time, he's pushing me to do cabinets. I was like, I'm not doing that. We're gonna do bathtubs and countertops, what we do. And he kept pushing me to do it. And one particular day, I did a job, seeing what it was about and we kept at it. And now, we're kind of 50-50 split, cabinets and bathtubs. Um, countertops we get nowadays, unless it's a flip, we'll spray them. But normally, everybody has Corian or marble or granite so now we're doing the, we're starting to learn that part of the industry, repairs, polishing, stuff like that, since the calls are coming in so much. What, so, what, I was going to, I was going to ask, so do you guys have a common goal? Do you guys discuss this? Cause I know, it, you know, it's like y'all, you guys are father and son. So there's another dynamic to the relationship outside of work. So like, what is the end game? Like, where, like, do you talk about, you know, eventually when you exit, what his role's gonna be? Yeah, he's doing it now. I mean, I can't do this in that capacity and grow anymore. I can't be spraying a bathtub every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, unless we just stay a small mom and pop outfit. That's not our goal. We do got a couple more guys. What Evan was saying is the only two real technicians is him and I. That's it. Um, the other guy is hard. Again, we, we got one guy. I love his work ethic. Can't even, he still can't prep yet. It's been months. It's just, it, you can't, sometimes you can't even learn it. You just have to have it in you. You know what yep. I mean? And so um, the, the goal would be for me to not get out of the business, but to move strictly to an office yep. situation. Yeah. Sales, quality control, Evan run the field, still spray, and then I can do some training too in the right setting, put guys on. That's our goal. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we all go through the same struggle. So we were talking about that before. They were talking about how uh, at Alliance, how they basically, you know, had to start from zero again because, you know, the original strategy just wasn't working as far as the technicians and pay and stuff like that. And these are things that you learn going in business. We did it as well at one point, And it's something that Jonathan's going through right now. Um, so, you know, building up the team, finding qualified people is the hardest part. That's going to be the the the... the biggest thing where you have to be you know really constantly like he's always recruiting that's one of the things i never turn down a call from somebody i always entertain it even if i don't need them because you don't know right and, and, but you want to keep qualified people at least close to you so you never know one of your good guys might leave something might happen you might get a big project having that extra person could be really helpful right. um but but yeah man that i mean it's going to be a rocky road but y'all are going to get there bro it, it, it's it's once you once you get to a certain point and people start seeing you, I really hope you guys start, you guys need to put your faces more on social media. I'm telling you. Because what's going to happen is people are going to see how Ruben acts. People are going to see how Evan acts and you're going to attract more people like you. As soon as you do that, qualified people will start reaching out to you to get jobs. And, and you know, we talk about it all the time. When you're advertising, you're not just trying to get, right, like a customer. You're also advertising, like this is a good place to work, right? And you want people to see that, 
because it's going to make it that much easier. Training people from the bottom up is, is, is good because you can kind of mold them how you want. But long term, if you want to get people uh, who are qualified, you know, we're already going through a small pool as it is. Because, right. you know, there's not a lot of refinishers out there. That's correct. So, so one thing I wanted to, to, to piggyback on was there's a lot of times, man, where I wish – I had someone to come into my life when I was your age to kind of tell me, hey, bro, this is the route you got to do or, or this is what you got to do or, or this is what I suggest, right? I didn't really have a, a father figure or a role model, right? So I want to take this time, especially with you, you know, your son, out of respect, is one thing I wish I would have done at your age was, was really um, – do some research, bro, right? Read some books, right? Educate yourself. Think outside of the box, right? Uh, do a lot of things to prepare yourself right now for the future, right? Because there's, I'm sure there's a lot of things like even that we all don't know, right? That you could probably figure out because of your age gap and where you're at and the way you look at the world because the world is changing. All the rules are changing. Yep. All the game is changing. And you're at the age right now where you're privy to all that information. So one thing I would like to tell you is start educating yourself, bro, right now. Like on the, the read books on refinishing, right? Read, read books on painting, right? Uh, read books on business, small business. Entrepreneurship, right? bro. Entrepreneurship, right? Um, but force yourself, bro, like turn the phone off and put about 30 minutes into a book, something that's gonna be able to get you to that next level. Right, something to get you to, to make you think outside of the box, right? Because he's handing you a Cadillac. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's your job, it's your opportunity to turn that Cadillac into a Ferrari. You know what I'm saying? Right? right so. Yeah, something, bro. You know what I mean? And that's what I tell my son all the time, bro. Like, uh, you have, uh, I'm building something, right? And I'm building it not just for myself or for my wife, but I'm building it for you and your kids, 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 kids. Right. So it starts it starts with you. You know, what can you do right now to make this thing go even further? Right. Than what you're even imagining right now. Right. So do the homework, man. Definitely, bro. There's so much opportunity to grow. So much things to do. You know, definitely. I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, so if you're if you're below 30 in the industry, right, uh, the, the average medium homeowner age is right around 45 to 55 years old um, and what we're seeing now and, and me and Danny talk about this all the time is back in the renovation industry you know there was traditional forms of marketing so anyone below 30 right now can leverage your social media platforms 10 years from now then you know we're, we are going to be the median age of homeowners so how you leverage your social media platforms is going to be a big game changer coming up in 10 to 15 years, something that, you know, renovation companies, refinishing companies 10 to 15 years ago didn't have to, to focus on. So that's something that me as a young refinisher and a young company owner and Danny as well is we try to, we, we we're preparing for that. You know what I mean? 10, 15 years from now, if you start today leveraging your social media account, that is how the future you're going to be booking work. People are finding us through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. That's not going to be the traditional way to find a contract and moving forward. So my advice would be, you know, you are the future. Me and you, we understand social media on a whole different level than your father will. You know what I mean? So if you, you as a 20-year-old can leverage that today for your company, you're going to reap the rewards for that 10 to 15 years later. You know what I mean? That's something to consider, you know, coming in when you're 20 years old in the game. Work on that. A hundred percent. You took the word right out of my mouth. I can't stress that enough either. At 21, bro, exactly as he said, which is exactly, he took it out of my mind. Be hungry, bro. Be hungry for it. Because I started at 25. I wish this existed when I was 25. I would have done so many things different. I'm 36 now. And, bro, like, I wish I was 21. Bro, I swear to God, bro, because to be able to, like, get into a table like this, bro, where people are just giving you knowledge from experience of, like, you know, like there's, like, 16 years of experience here, bro, soak all that shit up, and all I'm going to tell you is um, whatever current fad, like, at least this, I'm going to speak from my end, 
I didn't care much about being hungry because I was always stuck in the now and the wanting to fuck around and like wanting to go hang out and all this and that. Bro, all that shit is so pointless. It's not even funny. Like, get hungry and, and just soak up everything that everyone's got to do. And then when he hands you off and you go with that torch, 2.0 that shit. 2.0, 100%, bro. Yeah, I want to say um, all the stories are the same, you know. I just turned 46 this last weekend. Uh, the OG, birthday, the OG, birthday, the birthday, man. Six, man. <laughs> thanks. And uh, you know, same story. That's why I, when I, I had um, set out to you, when you guys won that award, and I heard you up there talking, bro, it it really spoke to me because I'm from the same situation, you know, where it was nothing but mama. Mama only gonna get you so far. Yeah. You understand? You got to get out there on your own. And I did it as a peewee and came up. And so when I got to Atlanta and seen that you could have something, right, I was like, let's go. I got five sons. This is one of my youngest boys. I had all my kids before I was grown. And I was just working, you know. And so when this opportunity came, um, I was like, I got to make something of it. I cannot let this thing go. And, And through the tears and the blood and the mud, we kind of came up a little bit, you know, and then meeting you guys, seriously, uh, with Danny's tenacity, this guy's tenacity is unmatched, bro. Yeah, it's Your guy's branding <laughs> genius is, I see it all the time, watch y'all all the time, don't, don't think I don't, right, but I'm still trying to figure out social media too. There's a way that I want to, that, that, that's where you got to step exactly, in, bro. Yeah. There's a way that I want to put it out there. With my logo and everything, and I'm still having, I'm, I'm learning cap cut and all this Look, stuff. Look, man, right? this is what I, I tell people. I told Carlos this because Carlos was, Carlos is the old school refinisher. Even though he's younger, he's cut from that cloth. Like, I do the thing, I don't brand the thing, right? Mm-hmm. And it, more important than focusing on what the fuck to post is just posting. Yeah. Uh, bro, you will figure out your style later. Got it. It, like, when I start, if you go back to bathtub guys, You know how I learned to get really good at doing posts? I did four posts a day for a year. And I just, I forced myself to do it. I I learned the fucking platform way faster. I learned how to make things faster. And because I wasn't that good at it either. Um, But I just forced myself. I'm going to put four things out. And if some of it sucks, then I'll just do better on the next four. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And it forces you to learn these platforms. And then when then you can get your style developed. Like I didn't like that. On the next one, I'm gonna tweak it. I'm gonna tweak it. Cause if you just keep chasing, like I want what I put out to be gold, you're never you're never gonna learn how to put out the gold. You gotta start, bro. It's just like when you start tubs, bro. The first one you spray is probably shit. Just like everybody here. Yep. And then you you develop a style and you you get better at it, bro. But that stuff, the social media stuff, it's attention, bro. That's it's the attention game. So the longer it takes you to go out and do it, the less attention you're going to have on yourself in that time frame. And here's the scary part. Shit moves like this. So by the time you're done learning Canva, it might be irrelevant, bro. You know, you got to get on fucking TikTok today. I told him for years to get on TikTok. Didn't fucking do it. He posts one thing on TikTok, two hours, 800 views. That's all it takes. And he just posted some shit. And his business is taking off. Carlos over here. His business is taking off. He used to sub for me every day. Mm-hmm. Subcontract work for me. He hasn't used me in over a month for, for work because he's getting his own leads. Because he just started posting. And you know, you, know, you, oh, lever- you, you leverage each other's strengths, right? So, so we talk, me and Danny talk about it all the time. We as a unit, was, it's me, Danny, and Alex, right? So we, we're all operating the Orlando and Tampa areas. So that's pretty much all of Central Florida. Um, and right before you guys walked in, we were discussing our roles. And Danny's niche is branding, right? So, so we understand our strengths as a team. And that's where I think that, you know, Evan could step in. You know what I'm saying? So, like, your dad is already running the day-to-day ops. He's building the, 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 the company in its entirety. You know, you need to absorb some responsibility where you fit in. Right, so I'm, me and Alex don't step on Danny's toes when it comes to how we're gonna market our company and develop our company's brand. We follow Danny's guidance because that's his specialty. And then me and Alex's specialty is we run the crews, we make sure shit happens, and we, and we close sales. So, you know, you develop that team, and uh, Michelle and Danny are the same way. They have their specialties, and everyone falls into place and creates an organization that's extremely successful. And so I feel like 
sitting at sitting here today with all these different companies it's pretty much the same structure all the way around right you got one guy who started the, the organization one guy who developed developed it off the ground and then you're finding people who fit in certain roles for their strengths and and when you get to a certain point when you're trying to break that hundred thousand or two hundred thousand mark you know you can't do it all by yourself you can't be spraying tubs and posting and marketing and answering leads and sales we have to delegate the responsibilities and work as a team and that's when we started to see i mean danny and alex were doing that from the jump when i joined them they obviously escalated my my business as well and i offered something to them that they needed too and that's how you guys will go about it and that's how danny and michelle go about it and right before you guys got here we were talking about how they how michelle just is taking over the reins at alliance because Danny's having extreme success at Ace Renovations, and someone's got to take on this beast of alliance. You know what I mean? I think my biggest advice would be, like, step out of your comfort zone. Comfort zones are going to kill you. Sorry. Comfort zones are going to kill you. I'm 46 also, and he pushes me. Like, you have to step out of your comfort zone. If you stay in your comfort zone, it's just going to kill you. And finally this year, I was like, okay, I, like somebody's got to take on the reins. Like, not that the partners aren't doing what they should be doing either, but somebody's got to take the lead, right? There's always somebody that has to, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to push. But like TikTok, like even if you don't learn it, like if you have the ideas, like I don't know how to use like social, like do videos and all that, but I know somebody that does. So I come up with the ideas and let's let's do that. Let's let's. Let's go out there and look a little silly today, even though, like, it's something that I don't want to do. Like, I'm, I'll be the first person that says, like, I'm not going to go out there and look stupid in front of the camera. But I've said that. <laughs> yeah. And, I'm, and he's just like, come on, just do it. Just do it. I'm yeah. like, no, no, no. Don't take a picture of me. Don't do this. I mean, like, but I've learned, like, this year, really, like, that's what people want to see. It you is. know, people don't just want to see, like, my before and afters. They want to see, like that you're a real business, you're a real person, you can be goofy, you can be funny, like you have fun at work. Yeah, the, the before and after pictures are great and I can spray a tub, like fantastic, but we can all do that, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's we're spraying tubs, but they also want to see like the other part of you. And those videos, the silly ones, the donut videos, the, you know, I'm a small business owner, those have gotten the most views out of all of our videos. I mean, we posted a lot. We have a social media manager that, you know, she's required to post 12 videos um, a week and the the silly videos are the ones that have really really taken off so my biggest advice would be like just step out of your comfort zone look silly who cares who's like who are you trying to impress anyways yeah, to, you his, know. to his um to give him the credit everything that you see is because they they him and his little brother showed me the reels I all of that he was about to say you know that, what like, I mean show me how to put the music to it yeah. you know um I hired a guy who's a good friend of mine. He, he does all the drone work in Atlanta and does a lot of stuff like that. So he did a few things for us. And so, but, you know, me and Danny talked about this before. Like, sometimes my mind, I do have to just let it go. Because I, I'm, I'm, I, I want it like, you know, I want to brand it like Coca-Cola. Yeah. I want to brand it like, you know what I mean? And that was very, you know, intelligent. What Daniel just said, man, put it out there. Because the time that you're wasting to get it right you're wasting time, yep. you know? And so we're going we're gonna to get on it. That, that video, of course I'm a small business owner. That was, yo, that, Bro. Was, that was a good one. Of course one. I quit my nine to five that so I can work 24 one. hours. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was Bro, a great you, and, and the thing about it is it, it's, it's more about like you, it, it's like day trading attention is what it's called. Like people, people who know, know, right? Some of these big, big creators on TikTok, all they're doing, bro, mm -hmm. there's literally a lady on TikTok that's like, come take a shit with me. She'll literally just fucking talk about where she took a shit today, bro. And she, they have hundreds of thousands of followers. I can believe it. They're not putting any extra shit in it. And not to say you shouldn't. You want to brand your shit. Like, we're, we're businesses. We're serious. But, like, you know, sometimes you just got to make the content. And who knows, bro? Maybe, like, people will like something that you thought might have been trash. And they're going to be like, yo, we, they, respond, they respond well to it. So and, then, and then it becomes your, your, your thing, right? Or your niche. So, so uh, I, you know, it, it, it was cool, man, because when we did that, uh, that donut video, um, I walked into a random apartment complex, right, to do a sale. And one of the ladies said, you're the one who took the donuts. We all know it was you. And I had no idea who she was, right? <laughs> right? I thought that was the coolest thing, man, because it, 
first of all, new property. Second of all, I had no idea who she was, right? But she knew who I was, and she knew the name of the company before I even walked in there, right? And I thought that was the coolest thing, bro, coolest thing, man. So I, I would say just, man, just step out of your comfort zone, bro. You yeah, know? and one thing me and Danny realized is that, you know, we're, we're a niche industry, so people don't even know this shit exists. Right. So so not only do we have the challenge of of selling the work, but we have to let people know that this is a solution to their problem. So that's what social media does. It may not generate generate a lead immediately. But what you're doing is you're you're build, you're building awareness, mm -hmm. especially in your local community. Right. So you're tagging Atlanta and you're telling Atlanta, you're telling all of Atlanta that this shit exists. They're thinking they got to replace that fucking tub. They don't know that this ha that when I started in this industry, we were talking about it off air that. When, when we came to the conclusion we wanted to start our own business, this came up as an option. When I first heard, I was like painting bathtubs. What the fuck is that? You know what I mean? So, so that's, that's what social media is. It's industry awareness. And then from that awareness, one day they, they learn, oh, that's a thing. And then they're like, when they, when they realize they have the need, you are the fucking solution. They saw your face as the solution. Not Miracle Method, not the guy down the street. They saw fucking Surface Pro does bathtubs and they are the solution in Atlanta. And that's, that's kind of how you have to approach social media is it's an, it's a, it's an awareness issue, right? It's not, it's not the same thing as generating a lead today and converting it into a sale. It's letting them know that this industry exists and when they need, then they have that need, they're going to, the first place they're going to go is to the donut guy because they saw the donut video. You know what I mean? And that, and that's how I feel, you know, you leverage social media. It's a brand and niche awareness that we exist and this is a solution to your problem. Yeah. And, and the platforms are ever changing, dude. That's another thing. And like I, I touched on it a little bit, but what works on TikTok today might not work tomorrow, you know? So the fact that you can get so much organic reach without putting money into it, like, why wouldn't you do it? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It, 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 it could change tomorrow. You know, there could be a hot new app and no one uses TikTok anymore. And it could be a lot harder to get attention. It could be a paid thing. It could be a thing where you could only post on here if you're going to pay or whatever, or a lot more stringent to be a creator. Like, you know, you want to get the attention where it's easiest and most accessible in the beginning, we also, especially when your time is tied up. We also figured out that that marketing on social media is still more affordable oh. than traditional marketing. Oh, so 100%. we and we only got about a year left of that mm -hmm. before Facebook and Instagram catch on that. This is the new marketing strategy. Oh, right, and as soon as they catch on, that shit's going to skyrocket. So you have about a year to leverage the platforms to where they they build brand awareness so, before it becomes equally expensive. That's what I would say right now, young buck is. Start now, bro. Start making videos like crazy, crazy, crazy. And show your face, bro. They, they want to oh, see yeah, you because, because they want to know who's coming. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know that, but they, they, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Time lapses, things like that. You doing the fucking job. It might be boring. It might be every day, another day in the office, bro. But to somebody else, they, they want to see you doing the process. You could use that for selling, bro. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is what we do. This is sped up. It took three hours, but this is what we do. Oh, yeah. And, and bro, use it as content. That shit sells itself that way, bro. I, I had a little bit of a question. Oh, as okay. far as Atlanta, how do you guys go about marketing? Like, what is your, like, what is your main thing that you guys are like, okay, this is what works for us here in Atlanta. Cause you know, every city's different. So everybody's got a little bit of a way that, that like he, he still goes and does the, the original method, which he goes to everybody's door. He shows his face. He's always giving cards. Like what works in Atlanta and what hasn't worked for you guys that you guys are like, eh, you know? Yeah, good question. Um, so uh, we touched on this last time we were here. Um, at first, I, I was paying a marketing firm. Okay. Right? An absorbent amount of money. Every was that, month. I, I was getting ready better. to ask, was that a lot of money? 2000 a month. Oh, but okay. Was, was that getting, generating you, though? It was generating me a lot of work. Okay, okay. And so one job is two grand. Exactly. So I'm like, the okay, rest it was works, paid right? off. Yep. I had a customer of mine. Um, he worked for the CDC. This is during COVID. He was a sure. doctor at the CDC. Oh, and he was, and I don't know how we even got on the subject about marketing, but he was like, Ruben, stop that, man. Don't do that again. My wife used to be, she used to work for one of those, um, you know, um, companies. Yeah. And they're just taking your money. Yeah. Like, learn how to do your own search engine I optimization, keep on right? Yep. And so, out of, by default, I, I think one of my payments didn't go through. The money wasn't there to pay for the, the lead marketers. The marketers. Yeah. And so... 
my phone stopped ringing one day. And I can gauge my traffic. Like right now, off this watch, I've already had several calls just sitting here. Right? That's the norm. So a whole week to go by without one phone call. That's crazy. I was like, this is weird. I hope they didn't like beat me for my money. It's some type of flim flam scam. Yep. And so I called them. <clears throat> and they said, oh, oh um, not to worry. Your Google ads budget ran out. And so I'm like, so you don't tell me? There's no letting me know this? Uh, no, basically, you know, we'll just, as soon as the new payment posts, we'll start back up. And that's our, this is how we put our strategy together for you. Yep. And so I learned a couple of things. Number one, don't ever put your business into somebody else's hands, ever. Yep. Do it yourself. 100%. All right? Learn how to do that. Number two, um, with the, um, I, I was telling them that, don't worry about a strategy. I have my own strategy. I need my phone to ring. That's what I'm paying you for. <laughs> don't run. Don't worry about a strategy. Okay. So, um, but when it stopped, it had like a domino effect, yeah. and it kind of just um, it like almost put me out of business as the fast mo- as I had momentum. Started. The momentum is gone. Right. And so, but guess what? The phone started ringing again, mm-hmm. and I was like, "How did you find me, customer? We found you on Google." So doing research, I learned that once you get to a certain amount of um, five-star reviews, Google's algorithm will start to organically put you out there for free. That's beautiful. Okay. Right? And so I took a couple bucks, put it into some keyword search engine optimization, and then um, wrapped my trucks, my trailers. You know, I'm going around the city. Yep. Believe it or not, that wrap will get you paid, man. Mm-hmm. I've had people come in. I've come out of restaurants that I've just got off of work eating with the wife. Yep. And two customers have came back to back. You do cabinets? Boom. And I'm talking about one was right. 10 grand, one job. Yep. So it paid for that wrap 10 times over. Yep. You know, that, of course, the two foot rule. Here's a card. You're two foot around me. Boom. Here's a card. You know, um, shirts, any type of, you know, your, your, your phone number, your website. Yep. Um, I have a booking I wait a book on my website a lot of times just from the phone while I'm asleep. I wake up, boom, got two bookings. Someone booked you. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. And so, so you have like a funnel page, right? Right, I have a website. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so exactly. now it's, it's finally starting the, the hard work. Organic. And the not knowing now. and the putting the money out that I did that everybody was telling me, oh, man, you're dumb. Don't do that. I did it. It's paying off now. Finally. 2024. Right. We're kind of solidified in the city. And just like the donut story, I was on the belt line. That's this thing they built through Atlanta, real nice. And I'm walking on the belt line one day. I think we had stopped to get a euro. And a guy was like, Bro, you 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 refinished my tub. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You're you're Ruben from Surface Pro. And I thought that was cool. You know what I mean? Like now I'm being Damn recognized. Damn right I yeah, am, exactly. baby. <laughs> so wrapping your truck definitely is is a go to. Man, wrap the truck. My trailer is wrapped for the cabinets. I, I pull a 14 foot double axle trailer. Yep. So I can transport. Man, the hits that I've gotten off of that. And the guy that wrapped it told me, he was like, Ruben, listen, you're gonna triple your 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 you know your your, your calls. Tra- yeah 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 your your, your uh, traffic the free billboard man, bro man yeah, we had a, a moving billboard at we that. had we had one of our one of our guys driving a, a minivan and it wrapped and we landed a really big property in Oakland California um, they called us and said hey you know we saw one of your vans you know you guys reglaze tubs and yeah you know they called us and hey man. Five years later, bro, they, they're one of our, you know, nicest accounts to keep us busy, bro, all throughout Oakland. You know, just because they saw... They saw the, the truck, they saw the wrapped van, yeah. 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 Our, our, our responsibility as business owners, especially if you're going to maintain employees and maintain people's livelihoods, is there's a difference between someone who uh, owns their job and someone who owns a company. If you're going to own a company, your specialty needs to be in creating opportunity, right? So, like... What we specialize in, if you're going to own an operation and you're going to have employees and people who, who rely on you to, to, for their livelihood, your specialty needs to be able to develop opportunity. And that's, that's why me and Danny talk about it all the time is we, we talk to owner operators. We talk to large scale companies, medium scale companies, small guys. Um, the guys that are doing it right is they're not focused on the day to day operations as much as they're focused on creating opportunity day to day. And um, that's something I've learned in the last three years of the industry is we can find guys to spray. And if you can't find them to spray, then you can teach them to spray. 
But what you can't teach and what nobody's giving out for free except the people coming onto this platform is how we're developing opportunities to build work. You know what I mean? And that's what we're talking about right now is, is raps, marketing, social media, brand awareness. That's our specialty. And everyone that's trying to scale, if that's not 90% of your focus, then you're not going to get there. Yeah, that, That's the hard part, bro. Anyone could spray a tub. You could teach a crackhead how to spray a tub. You Preach. can't, you, Preach. but like, you know, getting the work, bro. What's, what comes after the tub? If, if you're busy Monday, and you're not busy Tuesday. The fuck does it matter? Exactly. And on the other hand too, you could spray a tub like a fucking God. That shit can come out perfect. But, but if you ain't got no work, who, who gives a fuck? I want to say I, I have seen a crackhead spray a tub. That's, <laughs> that's a true story. Hey, yeah. Atlanta hey. special. <laughs> so, hey, I, I, I want to throw a little, I want to throw a little, a little wrench in this, man. And I want to ask, uh, this question is for everybody in the room, right? What is uh, the, your most recent big win, right? For example, like for, for, for Alliance, we recently, um, we had to restructure our whole business, yep. right? We literally, we, meaning my partner in crime, Michelle, got a grenade. And we talked about it earlier, but she got a grenade. Right, and she literally threw it inside what we did every day, and she blew it up. Right, what we were doing, it just it just wasn't working anymore. Right, but she saw something that I didn't see. Right, and no, normally I'm the visionary. I'm the I'm the one that's bringing up the ideas. I'm the one that's saying, hey, this let's, let's not do this. Let's do this. You know, this is not going to work. That's going to work. But uh, she did that. Oh, good. Good. It's okay, guys. The table's so, top heavy. So, so long story short, Michelle did that, and you know what? We're you know as a company, our numbers kind of decrease a little bit, but ultimately we're winning on the profit side, right? My question is for everybody else: is what have you guys done recently to get better? Right. I'll start off with Daniel. So one of the things we've done fairly recently is just uh, we we've just kind of agreed that. When people come for, to us for a job, it's our way or the highway. Because at the end of the day, it's like Jonathan said, we're the ones creating the opportunity. They're coming to us for a fucking reason. So if some guy comes to you and is like experienced, he does a good job, but then he hits you with, a, I want to make $50 an hour, go kick rocks, bro. Like it's not happening. You know, you, again, you came to us for a reason. So, and it's helped. You know, uh, you don't get a lot of these guys who, are super arrogant and think like, you know, that everything revolves around them. Uh, you also, you know, we also stopped uh, paying people percentage. Uh, it was a thing that we explored for a while, but we just realized that like, we're taking all the risk as the business owners, right? You know, insurance, you know, buying the supplies, buying the material, having an actual location, wrapping vehicles, paying for advertising, doing the footwork. You're just going to go spray the tub, bro. And, and, and never, ever let a, a, a worker forget that if they fail you, you could jump in and fucking do their job, bro. But they can't do yours. And that's the difference. So that, that changed, that changed, you know, that was a mindset that changed. We had a lot of entitlement going on, stuff like that. And similar to what happened with them, you know, we went back down to one tech and rebuilt again. We, ha we just, we had to do it. And it doesn't matter how good they are and how good they're producing. This is one tip I'm just going to throw in there before I pass it to the next. But, um, yo, bro, like, a bad attitude will fuck up everything, bro. You got to cut the cancer out before it spreads. Amen. I'm going to jump into that. In the, last, uh, in the last year, I've completely changed my mindset. I went from being an extremely negative person because I went through a lot of stuff to I just finally realized this, is, this isn't working. My attitude isn't working. And ever since I've switched it around, bro, to jump to what he just said, I finally, after seven years, landed my first big ticket. I got a ticket coming up in September for 85000 For me, that's a big deal. Um, Good job. And that came with, thank you, thank you guys. It's like and an AA meeting in here. 85000 is a huge deal. <laughs> for, for, for me, it's huge. For me, it's huge. And uh, that came with a lot of coaching and, uh, and, and a lot of mindset changing. So that, that, that was it for me, so. About, um, Good job, big your brother here. What's your name, Alex? Right? Yeah. yeah. Alex, let him so, talk on it. I would say. I would say you know a recent big win for us and myself personally is just uh, 
lately just been able to take more of on like the day to day role, uh, handle more responsibility, just handling the guys, you know, closing sales for the residential side of the business, as well as, you know, kind of taking a load off of his back, let him focus on what he's good on, which is the marketing you know, make, building those relationships. That's important. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> establishing, you know, like jo- to what Jonathan was saying, establishing brand awareness in general. You know, we've we've landed like three commercial contracts in the last few months because of it. So it's one of those things where, you know, if I can help him, he can help me. And, and together, you know, we're going to it's going to benefit the company. It helps everybody, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we, we're building a bulletproof team over here, man. Yep. That's a guys for sure. Yeah. You know, like we talked about on segment one of the episode, uh, you got to take some risk. And uh, me and Danny's history, we go back, you know, it's only been a couple years we've been working together, but it's been a, a, a good couple years, man. We, he's taken risk on me. I've taken risk on him. But one thing we haven't done is fail each other yet. You know, and, and so when you build that team and that structure and it's almost bulletproof at this point, when when we get these projects, it's not a matter of can we do it? It's like, say when, bro. Yeah, you right. tell me when yeah. you need this shit done, and, and they know they're going to call on me, and I'm going to call on them. It's everything from the point that Danny gets that, that, that lead in to how we manage it from the, set, the point they come in and they, that uh, Danny reaches out from the point it's scheduled to the point that the techs show up. Someone is there, and, and we built a system. We went through it this week where we were operating on 10 tubs at a hotel, and there was issues and shortcomings and we can rely on each other. And that's something that, that we all are trying to build together. And you guys are doing it right now. You know, you're going to find that third individual in your operation. That's going to take over that next aspect, right? As you elevate your son elevates, there's going to be that next hungry guy that really wants it. And you're going to gauge his character and, and his, and his vision and decide if he fits into your team and when you find that individual that's when things are, are really going to change but when you find that individual bro it's a wrap right i want to say um go ahead then no, i was just say what's your big win bro what you got so my big win which i've talked about before my biggest project to date was uh the sheraton project uh we painted 600 headboards for them that was valued right around Booyah! 160 to 190 k and uh, yeah they really really proud about that you know we didn't know how we were going to pull it off to be honest when, when yeah when we bid on it i was nervous as hell hey hey hey, hey man before this show ends bro you <laughs> gotta share you gotta share that story bro yeah yeah well. at the end of the chair <laughs> even if you shorten it uh-huh his story on how he started is inspirational bro i love it but go ahead bro what's your win man man um this year the win really was going into 2024 with not only the mindset, but actual, the actual ability to tell a customer, no, thank you. I don't need that. Yeah. I don't Amen. Need that. You know, um, the vetting process now for guys, and maybe that's why we're kind of where we're at, too. We had one guy, one guy, I won't mention his name, man. I love him to death. It's, it's what I'm finding in Atlanta, and, you know, everywhere is different. different everywhere, bro. Everywhere, everywhere is everywhere. different. Um, the guys that are super busy, they stay busy. You really can't get a hold of them. Um, I've got, I've went through a rash of guys lately where they show up and they don't show up. These are great technicians, man. You know, I don't know what really why that is. You know, so what I did with the vetting process is just got really stringent. You know, um, on several key points I need to see as we're talking. First day out with me is not even a payday. It's really just a interview. Wow. You want us to fill you out type thing, so you know we don't waste each other's time and no money. You know, and so. We started that, and then the scheduling. You know, before, you ever seen the movie uh, uh, Mel Gibson with the aliens? What's that movie? Signs? Yeah. Right? And uh, his brother was a phenomenal baseball player, but he had the most strikeouts, and he said because it felt wrong not to swing. That's how I was. It felt wrong not to take on the job, yeah. right? Because yeah. I'm a small business owner. Yeah. Of course I'm going to take on every job. Hell right? yeah, baby. And so... A guy the other day was like, damn, Ruben, you like a $2 hoe. You don't turn down no money. That's what he told me. <laughs> and so, but he was right because all money's not good money, man. You learn yeah. that young. Yeah. And so now I can, we, we tell the customers, like, if I even sense it's an issue, chale, man, I'm gone. I'm gone. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm doing it. Um, and that's kind of, it's helped the schedule immensely because, again, it's just really me and Evan with two helpers. You know? Well, yeah. you, you, they got to be qualified for you, bro. At this point, once you get to that point, bro, it's like at, at first you're trying to survive, right? Everything coming in is getting on the schedule, yeah. right? Yeah. Once you get to a certain point, you pick them. 
because you've gone through it. You know that the cheap asses are usually the biggest pain in the ass, bro. You tell you could tell that if you know someone's calling you for a four hundred dollar job and they're asking about your insurance and it's a residential customer, it's like, nah, bro. Like I'm not your guy. Yeah, it's like yeah, we carry it, bro. But like, please, they're already thinking issues are gonna happen. If they're thinking it, why? Like, why would you even? You know. So so let me cut you off. I apologize. So what is y'all's? That is the question. And how let's how go. what go. is your uh, way to? Tell the customer no in a perfect like, hey, um, hey buddy, do you got insurance? I got a two hundred and fifty dollar one door. I need you to spray. Like, what would you tell a customer uh, to say? I'm not doing that. Look, I'm just, I'm just like, look, we work in high profile places all the time. Now, am I just gonna give you my insurance information? No, I'm not gonna do it because you know I don't, I don't need uh, some frivolous claim. You're buying a product with a warranty. If there's any issue, we'll take care of it. Right. You know, like. I, I, like you open the door to stuff like that, you know. Usually, those are the pains, the, the people you don't yeah. want to do business with. They're usually a pain in the ass anyway, bro. Price them out. Yeah, you price it. You price them out also too. That's so another I, way I, you do I, it. I was just, I was just gonna say that, bro. So nine times out of ten, we get that person. His dollar went from here to here. Right. Hey, you want to work with us? This is your price, yeah. man. Yeah. Hey, I got an office here. We're in Brentwood. Check us out on Google. Check out our history. Check out our social media. We're legit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm not hiding. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not working out of the back of a truck. Mm-hmm. I'm not working in the garage. I have an office, bro. So you called me for a reason. Exactly. Right? You know? And, and if they're coming into the working relationship with distrust, then it's just not a good fit. Like, if you're calling me and you don't trust me, the fuck are you doing calling me? You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it goes back to the other thing we were talking about with the guys. You know, if they're calling you, it's because they have a necessity, you know? And if something doesn't feel right, it's just not right. And, and you're at that point now, thankfully, bro, where you can choose them a little bit more. Oh, yeah. and, and that's helpful. You so, know, we, so I, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Since, I, since I started with Bathtub, guys, we have a different approach to our warranty than most companies. Yeah. Right here at Bathtub, guys, we offer a lifetime warranty, and I've used that as a selling technique to um, make the customer understand why our price points are different. Because in our market in Florida, we're definitely on the much higher end of uh, on the value scale of what we charge. So you know, when we're when we're bidding on projects and they're receiving two to three to four bids, they're asking. The first thing we always get is why we offer a lifetime warranty and why we charge so much. And I tell them straight up. The, 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 the craftsmanship is the same. If you're hiring a professional refinisher and they're implementing the steps to, to refinish your, your, your surface correctly, it's all the same, right? Why do we offer a lifetime warranty and he offers five? Well, what I tell them is we're selling you a commitment, yep. right? So, so you have to value your service. So if you're, if you're not going to offer the lifetime, then you're going to offer value on price. If you're going to offer the lifetime, then we're going to offer you, we're going to charge you more, but we're charging for the commitment. And it's not a secret, you know what I mean? So I don't even tell them, like, we're, we're going to spray some special shit on your tub. We're going to do industry standards. Yep. But we're, we are committing to you as a client for a lifetime. And, and that's where I use it as a selling approach is we're charged more because of that commitment. We're not upselling you a secret sauce. We're upselling you a commitment. And, and that, that's how, how I go about and, it. And it varies with the warranty specifically. It varies from market to market. In Florida... The person, people move on average between every five and seven years. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to give a five-year warranty on the, on the fifth year in one day, if somebody calls in bitches and threatens to write a review, what are you going to do? You're going to go fix it, bro. Like, because you, that is worth more. Like, not having that bad review is worth more than just going and doing a touch-up, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the way we see it, too, is like our clients and our ideal clientele really – are usually people who are, you know, they want to a good quality job, but they're not going to stick around for 10, 15 years. Yeah. They just want it to last while they're here. Of course. So that's it, bro. And we, and we also use it as a way to, if, if you have a client, if you need work, sometimes you can use that as a, as a selling point, right? So, so if you have a client, it's, you, need, you need jobs. You're, you're, you're struggling on the calendar. Um, I've done it where, hey. We can go lower, but we can take away that lifetime warranty. Yep. Right. And so we will we'll, we'll, we'll reduce it by $100. Yeah. And that, that's a time. small margin to not have to come back yeah. and it's, know, 10 it's, years it, from now. It's also easier for a customer to comprehend. Or right, right now, we're talking about residential. This is residential. Commercial is yeah. a whole different. Commercial, thing. we don't offer a lifetime warranty yeah. for a number of reasons, but I guess we'll touch on that in a little bit. But with residential, um, 
it's easier for them to see the value. Okay, the warranty is the value that, that they're providing that's the difference in cost. So you start, you could start really high. You could be like, I'll do a tub and towel for 1200 mm-hmm. right? But then you could be like, but if you want the five-year warranty, I'll do it for 800 or 900 yeah, Exactly. You're still making money, but to them, the value perception is, no, they're not taking anything away. I'm just buying a lesser commitment. Correct. And we're still at market value at 800 Exactly. Right? So all the competitors are marketed at that price range. We've elevated past that. And we justify it with the lifetime commitment. So if, and then we, we gauge the customer. So me and Danny have talked about it. Like if we're getting negative feedback on our pricing, we need to find out why. So if, if you're giving us negative pushback, why, why are you not comfortable with our pricing? And if it's because it's too high, well, what are your needs? So yeah. if, if you're, you can, you get a lead through Thumbtack or a lead, you know, they may not, that might not be their residence. They don't. They may not tell you that either. This is a rental property. This is a flip. We need to find what's value for them. And and for a flipper, the value is going to be the price point. For a homeowner, the value is going to be long term warranty. And so we use that warranty as a leverage to 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 navigate that pricing to where we need it to be. And and no matter what, as long as we're staying within the correct market value, we're good to go. Yeah, for sure. And one of the things I I always think about when it comes to something like that is like. You know, you got to learn how to gauge the customer, right? That's why I like what you said when we first talked is that you, you do it all on the phone because they can't hide behind a text message right. or, they, or they can hide behind a text message in the email, but you get the sense of emotion through the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, you could tell right away the customer where you're like, hey, it's going to be $2,000. They're going to be like, okay, when can you start? Or they'll ask some other questions. The price they glossed over because it's fine. Usually you say $2,000 they are like, oh, I'm going to have to think about it right there. You know what they're thinking about. They're thinking about the price. Right. Now it's your job as the person on the phone to be like, all right, man, like, is it the price? And if it is the price, well, let me tell you, like we charge because of this, but you know, is this a place you're planning to live on, you know, for the next five, 10 years? Is this your forever home? Like things like that. Oh no, we're selling it. Oh, okay. Well, if you're selling it and we don't need to put up with the liability as long, then we can work with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That way you could, you can take some of those jobs from those shit companies, but you're not selling yourself too short. And you're also the customer. It's a give and take relationship, bro. You know, you're not giving them the fucking Lamborghini because they only need the fucking Toyota, bro. But you're still selling something that's good. That's a value. See, that, that, that's, that's the way we typically and, think and, about And that. we've gotten varied opinions on that. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like something that we haven't heard from other business owners that I wouldn't do that. So don't get, don't, I don't want you guys to think that we have it all figured out. We, this is an approach we have taken to try to, to, to see how this, this escalates and you know, like how, how it affects us as a company. Me and Danny made a decision. I mean, we've been at this for a little over a year together now together. Yeah. We don't get callbacks. And if we do, we always go anyways. It really didn't matter if the lifetime warranty was there. Yeah. So it's like, you're going to go back. You're not going to get a three star because Karen, you chipped her tub herself. So we might as well charge you another $200. Exactly. And, and, and and again, bro, it just goes, you know, in any business markups exist, bro. And it's for a reason, especially in renovations. You know, you hear it all the time. I remodeled this bathroom. It cost 2000 material and I charge 10 K, you know, they don't do that just because they're trying to pocket all the money. They do that because the Johnsons might call back in a fucking two years and want me to fix something. And there needs to be a, enough money coming, flowing through the business to put up with those incidentals, bro. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, like that's what, that's why we're in business. Right. And, and, and it's in the best interest of the customer. They might not see it that way, but if you're only charging 200 bucks, are you going to be in business long enough to repair something in five years? Probably not. And that's just the you truth. You can't afford to go back. You can't afford to go back. We, you know, we've all been there, bro. Yeah. How many, how many jobs have we gone, done and then it's always that low bid job that you got to go back and fix some shit. Yep. Right? They picked you on the price and now they're picking you on the quality of work. Yeah. So don't, don't even fuck with them. Yeah. yeah. Now, now we're, we're there. And to, to your point, real quick, Carlos, you two, you're in your 20s. These guys right here, your son, bro, this guy, y'all are v- very smart. I know Danny has a father and a... But it's in his blood. This guy is a businessman. These guys are smart. You need to be, You're good to go. You need go to be SpongeBob SquarePants over here and suck up all this knowledge. Soak it up, bro. But um, now we do that. Um, my, my thing is I have a way of uh, mirroring my customer 
on the phone. I learned it as a young guy at a telemarketing company. Yep. You know, um, so the sales part, right. And so um, I, uh, I asked the questions up front, especially in Atlanta. Hey, is this an Airbnb, a rental? I gauge, you know, question them. They let me know, make them feel comfortable so that I know they're not lying. You know what I mean? And so I, I, I give a construction price. I know you're trying to make money. I'm trying to make money. I give you a bit of a discount on what we're doing. Um, later today was like, listen, I don't care about warranties. I don't care about anything, right? Another customer had said that to me last year, and that's what got me to the point of saying, hey, I'll give you this price, no warranty. Because if you don't care, then I know you're not vetting your, your, your potential renters where they're washing four pit bulls in the tub, yeah. and then you're going to call me back on the warranty. So, listen, I'll do it at this price, no warranty at all. Even yeah. though I know my, our material is going to hold, but... For sure. And I've, I've also done that. So whenever there's, especially you, you know, we've all heard it. Oh man, you know, you give me a good price on this one and we'll do more work or whatever. Uh, you know, yeah, they love to hang that. What, they, they love that. But at the same time, what you got to do is you got to have them prove that they're going to do that, you know, to, to qualify for these rates too. So if you're, if you're wheeling and dealing like that, just always keep in mind. I, what I like to do is pay me full price first, unless you got something else now. Because something else later doesn't pay me today, bro. You know what I'm saying? So pay me full price. And when you got two or three of them, then we'll talk about a discount. But upfront discounts are bullshit, bro. Of course. You know, like th that, that shit, you know, it ends up just hurting you. And it may be different for, for you, but for me, I've learned that some of those people that's like, I don't care, are the most fucking critical ones, bro. Yeah. That, oh, I know I didn't buy a warranty, but this, this doesn't look right. And it's like, you go over there and it's perfect. And they still just choose to complain. So when you're pricing it, even if you're going to give a discount for that, like I agree, if they don't need the extra warranty, fine. But just always keep in mind, price it enough to where if you you have to come back, there's enough left in it for you. I got another question for everybody here too. Um, so what is y'all approach? What is your approach to a customer when you know the job looks fantastic and they're literally with their magnifying glass and light going corner to corner? So what do you I, do with that? I usually just look, there's, there's two ways to handle it, right? You send someone, I, I always like to, to send somebody to another set of eyes just in case, right? If it's completely spotless, there's nothing wrong with it. I usually just tell them, look, like this is something that's applied by man. It's impossible for it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. If you want perfect, you got to pay for perfect. And even stuff from the factory isn't always perfect. Right. right? So, you know, I, I, I kind of just put it in their court. Like, are you, when, you, when you're taking a bath, are you going to have the flashlight out? And usually they laugh and they're like, ah, it's whatever. But you, you got you to gotta be blunt to the, those types of customers. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're looking at it a light right now, but when you're, you're in there, you're not going to be, oh, you know? Bro, bro, the first thing I tell them is whenever they about to take that out, I tell them straight up, stop. Don't, don't even do that. We're not spraying Ferrari. Right, we're not we're not paying we're not charging you fucking twenty thousand dollars for a spray job, right. okay? That stops right there. Second, are you gonna be with the with the microphone glass or whatever checking the bathtub before you take a shower? You're not gonna do that, bro. Yeah. So, so stop trying that, to play that, me because that, that, that's yeah, just that's just that a, that, 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 stops. That, that that Cleveland flea flicker to ask for a discount. Yeah. Man, that yep. stops right there, bro. That's ridiculous, bro. I, I get into I get into arguments all the time, man. I, and w with with experience, I always tell them, bro, stop. No, 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 bro. We're not busting out the purple light. We're not bursting out any kind of light. We're not doing that. You've been listening to the Bathtub Refinishing Podcast. If you liked what you heard, be sure to keep up with the Bathtub Guys on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Or visit bathtubguys.com for more. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.